big screen close up. Woo, look at that. Wow. Look at those eyes. <laughs> Check it out, I've got a micro moog or moog, depending on your authentic pronunciation or not, synthesizer. It is not in the best shape, and in fact, it makes no sound, not just because I don't have it plugged in, but it actually makes no sound. Uh, this is a little worn down here. This is not very smooth um, yeah it's uh, all around in need of some restoration so I did actually work on this thing I think a couple years ago when I had a little bit less experience with uh, repairing electronics and I recall back then, I replaced, I think, a 555 timer and maybe like a LM something op amp. You know, just the obvious chips I could replace. And along with that, I resoldered a wire to the ground of the audio output, which seemed to be disconnected. And I did manage to get kind of like a hint of a sound out of it. I, I heard a little something but really nothing resembling the output that it should have. So my goal today is to bring this thing to fully working order. It's a monophonic synthesizer. So you can only play one key at a time. It's probably one of the first tabletop synthesizers. Notice the, the micro, kind of analogous to a micro computer as far as sizings go. So, I want to do two things here. One, I want to get it hooked up to an actual audio output. And two, I want to start opening it up. Alright, so I've got a little simple speaker here. Turn it on. Alright, we'll go around here. Let's Ouch. Apparently someone was gonna repair it, and that was their number. Uh, I really recommend using frog tape. If you're gonna use masking tape to label things, use some yellow or green frog tape. It's much easier to read than blue masking tape. So if I lift this sucker up a little bit here, you can see what's going on on the back. So I'll go ahead and hook up the high audio. And I also don't recommend wiring cords this way. I really like to get these nice twist ties in bulk. I actually get these from Uline. It's probably the only thing I like ordering from them. Um, but they are totally worth it if you get like a box of a thousand or two thousand. These things are great for winding up cords. So I'll do something like that. Now this is definitely not like how they wire cords up in theater tech. That's a whole different ball game because those are like 20, 30, 40, 50 feet cords. These are just, you know, your standard six foot cords. So I just go like that and it's maybe not the most pretty way to tie them up, but if you get a big thick cord like this, you could even use two of them. So like one like that and one like that, you know, and then you'll have these nice organized cords. Now, before I go any further, I got this operation manual. And ordinarily, when I start up a machine for the first time, I would probably want to check the voltages. Uh, but in this case, I know it didn't blow up last time I tried to turn it on, so I'm not really worried about that. Okay, so I got a preparatory pattern here, turn the volume all the way down, glide all the way down, routing off. Now it 
produces no sound, so a preparatory pattern. Turn all three controls in the filter section past 12 o'clock. Yeah, so really no sound. All right, so now I bring out the technical service manual. I really want to go to the troubleshooting guide. So the power light does come on, which is telling me the supply is working. All right, so I'm gonna open this baby up. service manual using like some kind of string thing to pull these up. The next thing I want to do is get this motherboard out of here. Now would be a good time to pull these guys out, just to reorient everything. So now I can take this off because I got the pitch wheel attached from here. Okay, now I've got what's called the service position, as you can see here. Now, one of the first things I've noticed going back in here, this cord is really short and it's supposed to have a cable detachment, but that is not my biggest worry right now. So I think before I do anything else, I want to start with seeing if this power supply is doing what it's supposed to do. And now something I just noticed, I was rearranging this cable here, these wires just <sighs> severed. So I'm going to pull this connector off here. Yeah. So this is telling me minus 15 ground plus 15. And I want to make sure that those three things are what they say they are. Got the meter ready. I'm going to turn this thing on. Ooh! Right on 15 volts. So that is a good sign. And what if I go to the other side here? Negative 15 volts. So, so far, I mean... I'm getting the right voltages on the power supply, which is a good sign. It doesn't mean that the power supply is good. It doesn't mean that it can handle a load, but at least it's not like out of range for starters. So here I am outside in my soldering station. I'm gonna see if I can reattach these things here. It re yeah, it really looks like someone already did re-soldering on here. Amazing.
right, so I got two decent connections here. Seem pretty sturdy. So first I'm gonna insert these. They should be the same wire, so it doesn't matter what order they go in. Alright, so those are squeezed all the way in and looking pretty good. So yeah, I'm gonna call that soldered. Alright, so here I am. I've got a nice freshly soldered power line here. It's maybe not in the best shape, but I don't think it's gonna harm anything the way it's set up there. So now the challenge is can I get this all connected with the current cable lengths I have here. I really don't have a lot of leeway. All right, so that is looking plugged in. What happens if I turn the thing on? So I got my Heiko desoldering gun, and I'm gonna desolder a leg of each of the electrolytic capacitors on here, and I'm gonna test them, and that way I can test them out of circuit, get an accurate result, and see if any of those are bad. All right, this 220 is measuring 356, which is Fine. I think these capacitors tend to overshoot. This is the one I'm really paranoid about. 0.77. Yeah, it really seems fine. You know, it's actually quite possible someone already recapped this baby. So a little recap here. I know it's not very loud, but if I press these buttons, getting a sound it's kind of a drone so what I learned was that my adapter was missing the shielding connection here and that was the first reason I didn't get sound so I'm looking at this IC here number 203 and one thing I noticed is that one of the legs is not really firmly attached to the board which may or may not be the issue I had to take special care to get solder down onto where this pin went into here because the trace is not connected on the bottom of the motherboard but it is connected at the top and I had to make sure that the socket is actually connected to that trace which is on the top of the board so I'm going to do a continuity test for that. Alright, I wanted to go into a little deep dive to the troubleshooting. So for starters, look, I had power light on with no sound. The 15 volt supply was working. So it says to check Q402 to see if the oscillator is running. And this is what I get, so that looks good. Now it says to try a few things, roll the noise, check the filter, check the output. So I ran some of those things through my scope and I didn't see anything. And so basically that meant that the filter is bad. So that brings us down to I VCF not passing signal. And first it says ensure that there's an input signal at the base of Q501. And the same waveform should appear at the top of the ladder. I didn't get this waveform appearing up here. And then it says check VF at P34 and it was negative. And so then it says the defect must be in the VCF summing network. Now I go down to VCF summing fault. It says check this IC and these transistors. So I ended up socketing a bunch of ICs and I also socketed this one. And so I went ahead and replaced IC302 and guess what? So this is before and you could probably can't even hear it, but it's just a little kind of whine. 
And so this chip, you can see I already marked it with an X. But I just wanted to show you. And so I pop that baby in. Turn it on. Voila. So to sum it up, I had an improperly connected audio ground. I had the one bad chip and I had a power cord that was barely connected. So all that stuff combined uh, is now fixed and I'm gonna put this baby together. Thank you.